everyone welcome back to another vlog thank you as always for joining me thanks for coming back if you are returning and a huge massive welcome if you are new to the channel so thank you so much so today's vlog is all about common medications you will see as a general practice nurse or if you're a student going on a placement in general practice the first most common medication you will see is a b12 injection i'm going to put the full name here because i can't fully say the word <laughs> i know but this is a very common medication that we do at the minute it comes in tablet form or injection we give it as an im injection into the arm uh, we re rotate arms each time they come because they have it so often and it goes into the deltoid muscle right at the top so this chunky bit here someone said it's like four fingers down i don't know where that's come from but that's what someone told me but yeah, somewhere there, you know, where your BCG is, round about there, that'll do. And these are just prescribed for people that have low vitamin B12. So they will come in and they will initially have a loading dose. So they will have one injection three times a week for two weeks. That's a total of six injections over two weeks, if that makes sense. So it'll be a injection on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the following week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's got to have a gap in between each one. And then after their initial load and dose, they will go to 12 weekly injections. However, you can give this one at 10 weekly. So between 10 and 12 weeks, they can have it, but the doctor has to obviously prescribe that for that time. And people have it at 10 weeks rather than 12 if they really suffer with the side effects. So if they're getting to like week nine and 10 and they're really struggling with fatigue and all them sort of symptoms that you get with deficiency, then they'll have it at 10 weeks instead of 12. But normally it's just a 12 weekly injection and less prescribed otherwise. I'm not going to go into all of the cautions, contraindications, side effects and all that jazz with all of these medications because we will be here all day long. Um, so please just look up the BNF. I always promote this. Come on, BNF for all of your medications. It'll tell you everything, literally everything you need to know, even the method of action in the body. If you go online, BNF is all there for you. The next most common medication we see as a general practice nurse is what they call Prostap or Zolidex injection. So these are hormone injections. They are given to people with uh, prostate cancer, breast cancer, if someone's got endometriosis, if they've got uh, anemia because they've got fibroids loads of different things they can give they can be given it for um if it's for a prostate then they have to do regular prostate checks on the blood tests just to make sure that it is staying where it should be basically in target range but these again are injections uh prostap is just into the arm again you can give it subcut or im there's i don't think there's any right or wrong you can give it both ways um you can give it into the arm or into the abdomen area as well a bit like if you were going to give um, a clexane or an oxy par in something like that into the stomach and it's all the ones that you get are pre-filled syringes as well bit of some of them are a bit of a nightmare because you have to mix them up because they come in two different parts and then you have to mix it up or there'll be ones where it's all in together so you'll have a powder and then a liquid under it in a syringe and you push it up so that the water goes into the powder and then you have to mix it frantically without getting bubbles in it it's just yeah it's ridiculous the way you have to mix some of these up but yeah they can be tricky and then the zolidex one is the exact same pretty much as the hormone um prostap one same way it works and everything Thin, but it, it's um it's more of an implant it, it's it's not the nicest to give it's the one that i actually hate with a passion to give because it's just looks evil and luckily my patients have all been okay and it's not too painful for them and they never complain that it's too painful it's going to be sore um, because it is quite a big needle and it's quite a wide needle as well it is quite yeah it's not nice and it's got like a little implant in that you just push under this under the skin release it and then pull it out and they don't have local anesthetic or anything it's literally just in out that sort of thing my, my last one went really well actually and that person said actually I, I didn't feel that I was actually quite happy with that so yeah that was okay but it's not a nice one to give guys it's yeah actually i'll put it here i'll put the picture here so you can see what i'm talking about otherwise you're just not gonna know but you need um separate training to do this so I couldn't initially give it as a newly qualified nurse. I had to do the separate training as part of it. And then I had to watch someone do it. And then I was watched doing it as well. And then I was signed off to do it. So it's not one that you can just give for fun. It's, you do need to actually have training for it. 
So I'm currently at work just given a hormone injection. So I just wanted to show you the types that we have. So this is one that we use for a patient with prostate cancer. He's on this one for life. It will come in a glass bottle. Obviously I've already given it. So this is after and I've just got a little break. So I thought I'd just do this. But this is where the powder is. And then there was a pre-filled injection, which obviously I've given. So I've had to get this. But there'll be a pre-filled injection with water for injection, which then gets mixed up with the powder. But this one comes with a little nozzle. So this is the nozzle that you have to put onto the bottle like this oh hang on so yeah i couldn't do that <laughs> but this is the nozzle that you have to just literally put onto the bottle twist it pull it off and that's ready and then you'll get your water for your injection you attach it to there like that put the water in mix it up draw it back up into the syringe attach your needle give to the patient Next up, we have uh, contraception. So you're going to have all sorts of contraception. So you'll be the person doing your pill checks, the height, weight, blood pressure, going through family history and all that jazz, making sure there's no contraindications with other medications. And then the one that you'll physically give is the Depo Provera injection. There's also Sanopress as well. That's a pretty newish injection. And a patient can give that themselves at home. They are trained to do it. But yeah, Stepo uh, is normally given about 12 weeks. It can be given up to 14 weeks now. It used to just be 12 and that was it. But uh, you can give actually give it up to 12, 14 weeks. But if they are late for their depot over 14 weeks do not give it unless you are 100 percent certain that person is not pregnant but yes depot provera is something that we give this one goes into the buttocks just at the very very top um left or right and we alternate as well like the b12s we alternate same with the prostap and the zolodex because we give it so often you have to alternate the sites again blood pressure height weight family history risk of osteoporosis and all of that but that is a common one we see as a gp nurse Sometimes you'll have a patient come in and they'll give you their injection and you've got no idea where it's come from, what it's for, why they're here with you with it and you'll just be like, what? <laughs> so that's when you have to do a bit of detective work. So obviously ask your patient, where have you got this from? Who's prescribed it? What's it for? Because they will know everything. Um, and normally it's the hospital that's given it them and then they're coming to us to have it. So then you would do your detective work on the computer, just make sure it's suitable for the patient, check all the details. That's what I do anyway. I, ch I get up the BNF on the medication. If it's a vaccine or something like that, I'll use the green book on the NICE guidelines because that is your Bible. And I will have it there in front of me, ready for the patient. But it's the most important thing you can do is be honest with your patient. Look at them and say, I'm really sorry. I've actually, I've never given this particular injection before. I'm fully qualified. I've given many, many injections, just not this one. So I'm just going to read how to actually give it. Um, because some of them come in really strange devices. You're going to look at the device and think, what is this? Like I was talking about, about the ProStat, where it comes in two separate bits and you have to mix it. And you'll just be like, I don't know how to give this. But there's always instructions in the box. And I just, I literally, I'm just honest with my patient. I just say, I just need to read these instructions because I've never given this type of um, thing before. And they all come. And I just explain they all come in different vials and syringes. So I just want to make sure I'm getting it right before I give it to you. And that they're happy with that. As long as you're honest with them, they're happy. We don't know all of the medications out there. We don't know all of the devices. We just don't know it all, guys. It's fine. It's okay. Again, be open, be honest, and you'll be all right. And the next hormone injection is Nibido. Nibido, I think that's how you say it. But this is one of our transgender patients that are on this. And, and I'd never seen this before either. I didn't know what sort of medications do what and things like that. So this was a really interesting one for me. I really loved it. And I loved looking into it and the um, side effects and how it works in the body for the patient. And it's really, really interesting actually to look at. That's a really good one that really enhanced my knowledge as well and it was really great to see that patient as well and how they're getting on with that medication and how it's affecting them as well so that's a really good one and my last injection is called I need to say it slowly guys or i can't say it denosumab 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 something like that I can't say it for the life of me. I think I've said it before in a vlog. I've been to a doctor before and said, oh, this patient's on this injection. I've tried to say it and they're just like, what are you on about, Claire? I'm like, I don't know, the Denso injection, the really good one, you know. <laughs> 
Anyway, common, really, really, really common injection that we give as well. This is a six monthly injection. So this one is for osteo, however, it can affect the calcium level. So with this one, you have to check the uh, patient's blood tests for two weeks before giving it. So this is for calcium, to make sure the calcium levels aren't dropping um, and also check kidneys, make sure the kidney function's okay for it. I have known patients to be on it that's got a low uh, GFR kidney function, but the consultant has said they're okay to have this injection because the benefit outweighs the risk. That's okay. It's like with any medications, they will just keep a very close eye on it and monitor it and any problems, any signs, symptoms, anything like that, then they get on the phone. This injection, again, can be given in the arms or the abdomen. It's a subcut injection and it's quite an easy sort of injection to give. It's not really, it's not too difficult to give. And this injection is also kept in the fridge. So with our clinic, we will uh, put in the prescription for the patient. It will get sent to the pharmacist and then when the patient collects it they'll put it in the fridge and then they'll take it out of the fridge the day of their appointment and they'll bring it to their appointment with them. Some injections that we do like B12 uh, Prostap is kept in our cupboard so we will order them directly from the pharmacist to our clinic to give to the patient but we don't do that with all medications there's only certain ones that we do that with and again everywhere is different everyone will do it different um, it just depends on the GP surgery how they run things but that's just the way that we do it but yes another the fun field injection inhalers oh my god so there's so many different types of inhalers i'm not going to go through them all literally it, it will be here all year <laughs> so yeah so if you are going to gp you will see long-term conditions one of them is asthma which is controlled by Firstly, a short-acting beta-2 agonist, or Saba for short, or um, salbutamol ventolin, the blue one, that is that one. So they have to have that. And they have to have an inhaled corticosteroid uh, inhaler as well, which used to be the brown one, but now they call, come in purples, pinks, and all sorts of colours. But as long as they're on those two, that is your initial management treatment for asthma. And as always, follow your NICE guidelines for every long-term condition. The NICE guidelines are there to follow. They are the gold standard. As long as you're following that, you can't go wrong. And then you've got diabetes. So people will be on uh, things like metformin for diabetes or insulin. I don't do diabetes where I am. We've got an amazing diabetic nurse who's just so knowledgeable. I'm just like, I do the foot ulcers and that's it. <laughs> but not just that, alongside medications, you also need the health and lifestyle changes. So stop smoking, exercise more, eat better, get fruit and veg in, less carbs because carbs turn into sugar in your body. You don't want that long acting sugar flowing around your body all the time. So having smaller carbs as well, those little things can really, really help diabetes. There's all sorts of information out there for diabetes. Have a look at the Diabetes Organization website. It's brilliant for everything. And again, nice guidelines, guys. And then we have got cardiovascular medication. So you will see people for their blood pressure and you will have things like statins for um, cholesterol. You'll have things like ramipril, so your ACE inhibitors. You'll have your bisoprolol, <laughs> can't say it still, which is a beta blocker. So you have beta blockers, your ACE inhibitors, all these type of medications all help blood pressure, irregular heartbeats, antidiuretics so things like furosemide as well which is a water tablet there's so many again there's just so many different ones it's like a minefield it depends on what your patient's condition is what the background is if they can have certain medications what their kidney functions like so the doctor deals with all that and prescribes we just look at it and we check the blood pressure and if the blood pressure is still high then we refer it back to the doctor to sort out the medications next up we have hrt so and when people are on this, we need to monitor things like their blood pressure as well, just to make sure that that's settled. Sometimes they have like an ECG in bloods just to check all the levels, make sure the heart's okay, make sure they've had like a full assessment. They'll do the weight, height, blood pressure, all of that jazz to make sure that it's safe to give HRT um, and also family history in the background as well, because with everything, there's always risk somewhere of things like cancer. So it's really important that we do thorough checks before putting any patients on this medication. Not that I do it personally, but the doctors do it. We just do the background stuff like the ECG, the bloods, the blood pressures. But it's just another medication just to be more mindful of that you might see in GP. So I think that's it for now. I can't my mind has just gone <laughs> mush. I've covered so many and I'm trying to think of some other ones that we might have seen, but 
I really can't think of anything else. They're just the main key ones that we see in general practice. So I hope that's been some sort of help for you. Like I said, got nice guidelines, official websites like NHS, Diabetes, Asthma UK, all of that jazz for all of your medications and info. But I hope that's been some sort of useful. So if you're going into a placement, like I said, for GP, it's really good to know what sort of medications and injections and things like that you might be seeing and doing. So yeah, I hope that's helped. And thank you so much as always for watching and I shall see you next time.